Welcome to the advances in research and in innovation stream of the SNOMED CT Expo 2024. My name is Peter Groves Williams. I'm a technical specialist at SNOMED International and I will be moderating today's session. All questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. Online attendees, please use the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenter. On-site attendees, please use the microphone provided in the room. I'm now pleased to introduce Adam Sutton from King's College of London, who will present Medical Concept Annotation Tool Using Large Language Models to Extract SNOMED CT Annotations from EHRs. Adam, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, this was originally submitted as a uh, e-poster and then the submission committee uh, asked if I can come and present it in Korea in person, so uh, thanks. Uh, so I'll just start with a brief introduction about Cogstack. Um, so it's a team and it's also a platform. So we're a bunch of interdisciplinary experts in computer science, clinical practice and research with collectively decades of experience. Uh, there is the Cogstack platform. It's modular, adaptable for centralizing structured and unstructured clinical data. And um, it's used for search, visualization, data laking. And we also offer an NLP component. Uh, it's deployed in multiple hospitals across the UK, uh, multiple countries, and we've ingested hundreds of millions of uh, documents. Um, we've probably active in more than five hospitals, but I'm just gonna go with what's on the uh, public website. Uh, so I'll briefly describe uh, MedCat 1.0. It's a natural uh, named entity recognition and linking model. So it identifies uh, it identifies concepts and then it categorizes them into the correct uh, SNOMED concept ID. Uh, so it starts off with a self-supervised or unsupervised model, um, which can be seen as like a base model that's just learned from clinical text without any labeling. And then later on we can do um, active learning using the MedCat trainer that you've seen in previous uh, presentations uh, yesterday. Um, so it's customizable, so it adapts across different clinical domains, ontologies and research needs. Um, it's got multiple applications, so it's used in, in patient care, research, cohorting, uh, and it's part of the Cogstack line. Um, the deployment uh, is, uh, we will go there locally in NHS hospital hospitals and deploy it. Um, and give them expert support. Um, it's a relatively lightweight model, so we've seen examples of you know generative transformers uh, where they've got you know eight billion or seventy billion parameters. Uh, this can have hundreds of thousands or just a few million parameters, so it's really lightweight in that sense. Um, so yeah, two of the big examples that you're using for is searching for individuals and cohorts, so we can look across. Uh, uh, snow med concepts or we can look at from a higher level of uh, a cohort of patients um, which is useful for research and for clinicians uh, since we had medcat 1.0 we've developed a bunch of additional additional features some of those have been presented already this week um, so we've seen a medcat trainer in action uh, we've seen uh, a ralcat and there's others as well such as anoncat which de-identifies the text MetaCat, which provides meta annotations, and then Cogstack Cohort, which provides overarching uh, views of a cohort of patients. So, why do we want to go to MedCat 2.0 if it's um, if MedCat 1.0 is so successful? Well, MedCat 1.0 uses Alistair models for entity recognition and concept linking, and it starts off with a word of language model, which came out in about 2013. Um, it has to have some manual handling of misspellings. So if you have uh, a misspelling of full remission, then we have to handle it to say that we've got the correct full spelling. And um, we also have to manually handle uh, multiple names of the same concept. So if you say complete remission instead of full remission, we have to manually gauge for that and prepare for it. Um, MedCat 2.0 uh, will still be the same fundamental, fundamental named entity recognition and linking model. Uh, It'll be using a transformer based model, which is obviously very popular nowadays. Um, the models will contain contextual information. So um, in the clinical context is not as important because everything's within the clinical context, but there is still cases where it's still important. So uh, if you have the uh, word shot the representation could mean like a vaccination or a gunshot wound. Um, we aim to 
the model itself aims to better handle misspelling as part of its architecture and to be robust and handling names without the um, manual coding that we do currently. Uh, so uh, the better question is why do we want to do it now? And it's kind of a sign of the times where um, we work predominant with the NHS and say when MedCat 1.0 first came about, there was probably not enough appetite or computational resources and the, the people who can make the decisions probably wouldn't have been invested in something that was computationally uh, more challenging and more difficult but because of chat gpt and the fact that it's become more known to the wide world and world and people know what large language models are now it's um it's probably just the right time and place for it to happen uh, so why medcat 2.0 and snowmed so um snowmed is our most com common clinical terminology that we use in medcat um it's constantly iterated on uh, the concepts are improved upon uh, often. It has uh, multilingual support, which is something we're looking to move into. And there was a talk yesterday about that as well. Uh, and we're also looking to get feedback from people here today, hopefully. Uh, so this is the first part of the model architecture. Uh, it does everyone familiar with, say, like a BERT model architecture. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to spend too long explaining it. Um, but you have an input piece of text. It gets tokenized. Uh, it gets embedded using a word to vec model and then we have a number of transformer layers which um, give uh, contextual information and then we try and predict each token either if it's an entity that we want or if it's not and then what ent entity it is. So in this case we're using the full uh, remission example again and then you can see that uh, B and then the code is the beginning of that uh, concept and then the I is for the intermediary tokens. Um, so this is like the original first step of the proposal, um, but doing this on its own is probably not feasible. Um, so Snowman CT has about 350,000 clinical concepts. So in this case, we would have 700,000 unique labels. So, uh, so from a programming perspective, that's quite difficult. So the final layer would have each of these tokens would be 700,000 uh, 700, um, potential labels. Um, so that's infeasible from a a memory standpoint and then if you look at it from uh, training a model you would ideally in a real world like to represent at least all of these models um, uh, it leads each one of these labels at least once which make asks for a lot of data so it's quite a task so what we've done instead is say just predict the top level concepts so these are things such as qualifier value finding and stuff like that uh, and then we have another step which is again we've gone back to a linker uh, so there's three steps in the linker. So we have a candidate generation, um, and there's multiple ways we can generate these candidates. So we can do uh, nearest neighbors, uh, dictionary lookups for exact matches, uh, edit distances, uh, stuff like that. So we'll generate, say, 100 potential candidates of what we could get. Uh, then we do contextual scoring. So we score them based on, say, like a similarity measure or a learned uh, method. Um, we'll score, we'll find the highest one, and that will probably be our prediction. But we can also do some disambiguation as well. So we want to ensure that the best match is found after ranking. So we'll be looking at synonyms, abbreviations, and a bit of polysemy. Um, and hopefully, compared to MedCat 1.0, the, the disambiguation is done as part of the model feature rather than added on. Um, so we started off doing the SNOMED CT ent entity linking challenge. That was done earlier this year. We didn't have time to do the full tech challenge. So we just did the first part of the NER task with the small data set that was provided. And this is our performance with an F1 score of 0 0.073. Uh, if anyone's aware of that task, those numbers are quite high, but it's fair to remember that we were using the top level concepts rather than the actual concepts. But it is a nice, it is a nice step. Um, but these metrics will also improve with specific fine tuning and active learning provided by COGSEC. Um, uh, we're not planning to get rid of uh, MedCat 1.0. It's still useful. It's still really lightweight. Um, it, it needs some conscious effort to provide additional context. Uh, it's not a standardized model like Hugging Face and Transformers has become. Um, and it's, well, it's CPU, it only works on CPU, but it's fast enough and it will 
meet most requirements. Uh, MedCat 2.0 should provide better performance than uh, MedCat 1.0, provided enough data, enough computation, um, and en enough time. Um, it uses transformers, so we can deploy models onto hugging face if we can, if we have the ability to. Um, but it also may require GPU computation for uh, for some requirements. But both of them are still able to do um, entity recognition and linking. Uh, we want them to be interoperable with all our features that we've already developed, handle large amounts of free text, and have a, a support with the MedCat trainer. And we can also start from an unsupervised training step of as, a, as a base model. Uh, you can see there's a lot of similarities between the BERT, how they have the base model and then your fine tuning step. We already have that with the unsupervised learning step and then the supervised learning step. So they, they blend quite nicely. Um, when would you choose one or the other? So this probably need, is, is going to depend on your hospital or your requirements. So MedCat 1 is probably suitable when you've only got access to CPU compute resources, if you've got fewer training samples. If you're, if you're testing the waters, you could probably start with MedCat 1.0 and maybe move on to MedCat 2.0. Um, but if it already meets your required performance for what your task is, then doesn't, you don't need to go any further unless you want to. Um, MedCat 2.0 is probably suitable when you've already got access to GPU resources or you've got money to fund that. Um, if you've got plenty of training samples uh, or you're willing to commit to MedCat 2.0 and you know put the funding in or the computational resources uh, and you're willing to handle the higher computational requirements. So these are our next steps. So none of this model architecture is finalized. We've done early work with this but we want to finalize the NER model, define what our linker will look like, and obviously get some feedback here today, hopefully. Then we can start training the models. Uh, we can train the NER, NER and the linker as an end-to-end -end task, or we can do them individually and make it a more modular approach. Um, we can integrate the new model architectures to be a part of the MedCat library. So we want to still work with MetaCat and RALCAT. We don't want to remove features by adding, by adding a, a, a better performing method. Um, we want to deploy locally and train models on local sites uh, and fine tune with the MedCat trainer and potentially upload models using only the public available data or a publicly available data to hug and face repos. So it's, it's a more standardized um, library that people have used um, around the world. So hopefully us being part of that will help um, increase our noteworthiness. And these are our conclusions. Uh, MedCat 1.0 has been successful. It's been widely adopted by hospitals and researchers, primarily using SNOMED. Um, we've added in additional features over, over the years, anonymization, relation extraction, and meta annotations. Um, the goals of MedCat 2 is, the simple answer is, we want to increase the performance, we want to increase the precision and the recall. Um, but to do that, we're going to improve uh, disambiguation handling context and error corrections. Our proposed model is using a transformer-based architecture, um, which is much more standardized with the NLP industry. Uh, we want to make sure that we integrate MedCat 2.0 into what MedCat 1.0 offers in its uh, library, and it fits nicely into the Cogstack ecosystem. And for the next steps, we want to get some feedback, figure out what the model is going to look like, uh, define and train those models, and integrate into the MedCat package and deploy. And I've definitely gone way under, haven't I? More time for questions. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adam will now take questions. As a reminder, if you're in the room, please use the microphone before you speak. Adam, can I ask a question? Uh, it seemed to be that the choice of using MedCap 2 there was more of a budgetary or higher project management decision than a technical one. Did you have a feeling for the actual cost? Is it twice as much? Is it three times? It depends. If you've already got the computation available to you, so I'd, I'd think of it from an NHS hospital perspective, so no hospital is the same as the next one. Um, some of these hospitals might still be doing physical filing for some hospitals that might have actual real effort put into what they're doing in this kind of work. So um, you have to account for all, all of those. 
Um, I think that in the terms of the timing of when you've got um, going from MedCat 1 to 2, some hospitals will be able to transition easier than others. Um, but you have to still accommodate for different kinds of budgets or different kinds of ambitions for what they're willing to do. Thanks. Question in the room? Hi, um, Kim Wafong from US National Library of Medicine. So I have a um, rather technical question. So in MedCat 2, you're saying you're using the transformer-based um, uh, methods. So are you using pre-trained models that are already available, like BERT, BioBERT, or are you building your own transformer-based um, uh, language models? So that's a good question. It could be either. From right now, I'd say you're probably going to start with, I think we'd have a pre-trained model that's trained on clinical uh, text. So if they're, um, like, say, like a BioBert or a clinical BERT, that could be the case. Um, because of our unsupervised step, we might not even need that. Um, we can start with uh, completely randomized parameters, uh, do our unsupervised learning step that we do in MedCat 1.0, which is um, looking at word similarities between the concept and uh, the text that we're looking at. Um, the performance of those models isn't going to be great. But it's like a first step to get it uh, into the MedCat trainer for then uh, clinicians who are experts to then start doing their own annotations and then we can train from them, which will be the big increase in performance. So any plan of moving into the LLM world? Uh, yes. You're going to experiment with the, the, um, the commercial ones or the, the free source? Uh, most likely the open, open source LLMs. Thanks, Adam. Um, how do people find out more or keep in touch with Cogstack folks uh, and latest developments? Uh, so our website is cogstack.org, uh, and that's also uh, my boss, so you can talk to him as well. Um, we have, you can email me directly. Uh, we have a Twitter account. GitHub. GitHub. Code's all up there. Uh, discourse. Uh, there's multiple other places, but all of those links are available on the Cogstat website. Any other questions in the room? Uh, another one for me. Were there particular features in MedCap 2 that particularly lent themselves to working with SNOMED CT, or, or were they pretty much of a muchness between the two versions? Um, no, it's the ubiquity of SNOMED that is the motivation. Uh, MedCat 2.0 will be based around SNOMED rather than the other way around of going, wow, MedCat 2 will be really good for SNOMED. It's, SNOMED is so used among the NHS, so we have to consider it as, as a key part of it. Okay, thank you very much, Adam. With that, we will conclude this session. Online delegates, you can stay here for the next presentation in the stream or access another session through the event lobby. Thank you very much. Um,